I just remember that that particular mesh that was like, you know, the um, half a centimeter square mesh, it was just like every time you cut it, you cut your hand or stuck it in your hands like it it just had like constant like the ends of them were like this and they were just vicious Laser sharp yeah that was it that was a hobby a hobby challenge to uh to come away without blood <laughs> I'm also genuinely unsure about some things. When we get to more time, like I've got a more time warband thing in my folder with my handwriting on it. I have no memory of playing that game, but I know I own some Skaven from that period. Again, no memory mm. of them. <laughs> Welcome to Planet Smasher Games HQ. Uh, I am today joined by a very special guest, which is my dear and perhaps oldest gaming buddy, John. Say hello, John. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's John. Uh, yes, as uh, Mike uh said we um we met ages ago uh as as young boys at school and uh and hit it off straight away and uh used our close friendship to uh to battle over the tables uh, various war games and uh, and miniature games yes and so here's the thing um for for various reasons a lot of my childhood is obscure to me at this point uh and so <clears throat> Having chatted to John a few times, he has both returned to me old miniatures that I had forgotten I'd owned. Some metal chaos knights found their way back into my possession a few years ago, um, but also reminded me of some of the games that we played in the past. Um, and so I thought for uh, this conversation, which is um, probably the first of a few uh, chatting to chatting to friends about uh, gaming heritage, um, I thought we might go back and chat about the sort of games that we played when we were lads uh, in the 90s. Uh, spoilers, there'll be a lot of GW stuff here, although we did uh, dabble around with some other things as well. Um, and I guess I also wanted to introduce John, uh, who is the first new character on uh, the Planet Smasher Games YouTube channel. But I hope you will see him appearing again uh, in some upcoming battle reports that we're uh, furiously painting models in order to uh, to get to. Hopefully so. Um, one of my, uh, I, I think, key attributes is how poorly I play uh, miniature games uh and and mike also has that criticism uh sent against him so it, it's exactly. be, perfect uh, yeah perfect opponents for a particular kind of play yeah um, two people uh, hitting each other with fish that's the that's the analogy <laughs> yeah exactly it's also a good play testing like uh you know getting spanked by a, a highly skilled competitive player uh also is a different kind of playtesting that's useful, but not always the only kind of playtesting you want. Exactly. Um, all right. So, John, uh, the first thing is I would love for you to explain uh, to the gentle viewer at home um, a little bit of your like earliest gaming heritage that you can remember. So particularly before we met um, at age like 11, I know I'd been playing some some sort of, you know, fancy games and whatnot. What did you have in your cupboard? What do you remember playing first? Primarily, um, at that age, it was um, Hero Quest and um, the other main one was I had a, um, I had a, a schoolmate from uh, a previous school whose older brother uh, was a, like a year older. So they kind of they hung about um, more than normal kind of siblings would at that kind of age. Mm. Um, and both of them were into... Um, playing space marine the one of the kind of the epic ah. scale uh, games so that was really um what kind of perked my interest not only did i have um a couple of um friends to play hero quest with who were of my kind of peer group and kind of a same age mm. um rather than having to kind of you know shoehorn members of your family into right. playing here you know your gran to play hero quest and trying to explain to her what a barbarian was um that, but that crucially was, that an was... older brother who knew who knew enough to be into space marine yeah and and that certainly piqued my interest because it, it kind of showed me um that there was a a world that was 
um, more open than what was just on a board game or what was kind of, you know, in a box uh, with MB games on it. Um, did you, or, did or, you... or the kind of the classic games, which were, which I found, I didn't actually find particularly interesting, like Monopoly and things like that. I, I, I didn't find those kind of games particularly um, mm. kind of mentally enriching, really. Um, and did you paint your hero quest models were they painted with humbral enamels certainly did yeah the the, the good old humbral uh you know and, and airfix kit uh paints um i think i probably invented uh dipping before oh, yeah. it was uh, fashion but uh but my dipping was straight into the humbral paint uh yeah, yeah right. and then it comes out like a gigantic glob so <laughs> um i feel that i've slightly improved over the years um and mm. i'm quite pleased with that yeah, you you and I are both quite slow painters. I think you you come out with better better results on the uh, on the uh, on the whole. But um, wait a minute, D uh, didn't you also have Battle Masters? I remember seeing that. I'm not I did, sure if I played was, it with you. That was a little bit later on. That was that was that was after we met and then oh. started kind of um, uh, start. I certainly after I started playing uh, some games workshop games. So, so essentially hero quest was kind of my, my true entry into mm. the, this kind of world. Um, I had, yeah, I had a, a few games of, of space Marine, um, or kind of the Epic, uh, games. And that was enough. Did you, to have, the, like did you have any of the boxes for those things then? I didn't know. No. So that, that was, had, that was me. You just played a, and then, a few games of them. Yeah. And, and that was enough for me to kind of definitely pique my interest, but I, um, I think at that time, I was more kind of um, engaged with the the twenty eight mil Hero Quest kind of size yeah, yeah. of miniatures rather than the very small. I, I, I think Space Marine and, and the kind of the epic size isn't necessary. Uh, personally, isn't a great intro for like the under twelves. <laughs> it right. had Titans and things, and and it had tanks. That was cool, but. Um, I, I think that's quite a difficult um, entry game. Yeah, that, that sounds that sounds reasonable. I was always quite enchanted by the tiny tanks, but perhaps when I was a bit older, a few years older. Yeah, so so then it was really a question of I wanted to get into miniatures gaming. Like that was a choice. It was like you know, like what would you like for your birthday or Christmas mm. kind of thing. And and it was like yes, I want to try and and work out what to do and and. Um, like so this was kind of 1994-ish mm -hmm. that kind of era 95 um so really there wasn't the internet in the same way there wasn't you know alternative blogs or anything like this it was a uh, white dwarf magazine at your local corner shop uh monthly and initially it wasn't even a subscription to that it was me digging digging through and sort of seeing oh model railway magazines mm -hmm. and oh look at this cool white dwarf magazine and and from there trying to work out what i would like to spend spend my um rather small amount of money that i'd i'd scrape together on um and i i chose um the fourth edition warhammer fantasy battles uh game because that was essentially the the uh, the newest game coming out at that time and obviously as a you know as a 12 year old or whatever that's the they do a good job writing those articles in game in uh, in white mm. war uh, gets you very excited for for all the new new games yeah and i remember i remember your set of that uh and uh, we definitely played with your set of that um i uh, i have a rule book for it but i don't know if i don't know if i owned a, a copy of my my fun. understanding my understanding was that uh, so you then came back from the states um and um that's where we met at school mm. um and i you know i introduced you you were coming around the house and i introduced you to the, the this uh this game um which yeah we played a couple of uh, a couple of games for and uh, enough to kind of i think pique your interest in this particular kind of area i know that um you've probably talked about it on the well on I, the channel see, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure it out because i used to play 40k with my friend jonathan and he was a school friend from a previous school but i think mm -hmm. that must have been after we'd met that was after and, and so jonathan so... and i were still at scouts together and so we'd we'd figured out yeah my understanding is that i'd i'd um 
I started playing Warhammer Fantasy mm. the kind of the year before we um, started secondary school. Mm. So I'd been playing it for about a year or so. And so when I introduced you to it, um, the next big thing that was coming out was uh, 40K, mm -hmm. um, third edition, yeah. um, I think it was. And so that was the new hotness. Um, and I think, to be honest, I think you're a little bit more uh, of a sci-fi guy anyway. Um, to, certainly yeah. were then. Look, I've got this. I've got this, which isn't the exact copy that I purchased, but this one says December uh, 1990. Oh, no, this actually I penciled in my original copy. So I did keep this one. December 1993. That was definitely the first time that I actually like paid money for something in a games workshop. So that yeah. that checks out. That's like what we, we'd be about 11. So we'd have just met. Yeah, I think that was the first like first term. Oh, my God, this is this is so <laughs> yeah, cool. right. Yeah, we need to get something. Well, the other then... thing that must have happened in the first turn, um, term, but now that you've given me your timeline, I know that this must be the order that it happened. There was a copy of Warhammer 3rd Edition in the school library, like quite a dog-eared, like falling yeah. apart copy. But I remember getting that thing out and it being like a like a like an occult tome, partly because it was so musty and falling to pieces. Um, but it can't have been that old, I guess, at that point. But it was obviously well-loved, like somebody it had was well loved. it out. I think also it kept on being there was obviously uh older chaps at the school that were um were also kind bigger of boys. into into it bigger boys yeah and I think that copy was like they, it was hardly ever in the library for any length of time because <laughs> within 2 days you know it would then then been taken away generation. again so yeah. yeah I didn't know and then also it was in the in that corner that no one ever bothered going into because I think there was a load of textbooks there that no yeah, one so cared about. I'm so. certain that I've never played Warhammer Third Edition, but I have read it a number of times when, you know, the stars aligned and we we were able to take the holy text out. Yeah, no, it was um I don't I don't I don't think we we got to that point yet. It was more well, I guess there was, no, there was no need, like you we were already exactly. playing fourth at that point. Exactly. But I think my main issue was I was very like i wasn't able to um <laughs> invest enough money to get a full-fledged warhammer army without then being distracted about some other game and so everything was kind of you know you got kind of two-thirds of an army or the what we would count as a a full-blown army you could play with like maybe a you know 1500 points you could at that time there was a lot of um it was very character heavy so we would be play we would be playing with 3000 points but i was always playing with tyrian and teclas and eltharion and what? something else so that was like literally half my army was three <laughs> dudes romping about well i think this is this is going to be the pattern with a lot of these is that like the release schedule of like sort of summer and and christmas box games from uh gw like they were just they were priced just about feasible to ask our parents for it as a main present and so between the two of us we ended up kind of hitting a lot of the notes in these but like we didn't have a ton of pocket money in between to actually fill the things out so a lot of yeah a lot of games were spent playing with uh you know the the, the minis in the box plus like one or two extra and i think that's apps. where to be honest i think that's where I first noticed where um, your kind of um, your the start of you trying to create your own elements and oh, right. to tweak the rules and things like that. It was certainly, you know, and, and I think that came out of having to problem solve, like, you know, Round how do resources. I get a, you know, how do I play a game where I don't actually have enough miniatures right. necessarily the, the correct miniatures as mm. per the rule book and, and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, it, well, it started off as, Oh, actually I'll port all of the miniatures from space crusade into playing Warhammer 40 K because at least you get a dreadnought there. And, you know, then there's a tarantula like gun there and, and all this kind of stuff. And then, and then, and then there's a, a some kind of robots and then and then from there you kind of then you you then kind of start making up your own rules and and they and because that was successful in that it was fun mm. that's kind of where you started to kind of compound that and actually 
develop uh these things these this kind of um that that element of your hobby Hmm. Yeah, that sounds right. I definitely, I definitely have a sense that like the way that the games were presented in um, White Dwarf was like, firstly, they were always presented as they still are with like, it's your game, do what you like with it kind of a thing. But I think even more so back then, but also like, and we'll maybe get to this a bit more when we talk about Manowar, but I feel like a lot of the games um i kind of understood only through the little expansion rules that they put in articles and so i could see pieces of the elephant but i was never able to see the whole elephant and so i guess that was like both an inspiration to sort of create the rest of the sort of invisible creature so that like well i could i could figure out how to join the rest of the dots we'll we'll figure out how this works which i think with space fleet might be what happened um, so, but the other is uh, that like well yeah. if there's lots of little pieces of like in my in my teenage brain, I was always like, well, I'm writing an article that I might submit to uh, GW or White Dwarf. Like I've got, it was on a hard drive that got destroyed by my angry little brother when he got uh, when he got frustrated with our computer at home. But I had like a an article that I'd written for um, Citadel, probably. Oh, sorry, the um, the journal. Well, it, what it was was it was you know when orcs get bionic bodies and they put like wheels and stuff on them. Um, I'd written like a bionic zoomy boys thing where it's like, here's the rules to like fit sort of tracks and wheels to the bottom of you. And I'd written it like one of those kind of Jervis Johnson things where it starts with a little bit of, you know, fluff and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So obviously like I was just sort of aping, you know, we were just aping what we were seeing really. I think, I think, um, you know, I was, I was obviously, you know, had a white dwarf subscription that essentially um, satisfied me. Mm. Games Workshop and and those games and the White Dwarf subscription satisfied me and my that that requirement of the hobby throughout my kind of um, younger teenage years. Um, you um, branched, you expanded on that. You also got these um, the Citadel journals as well, Did which I? were the yeah. So you you had about six or seven of them, and and obviously they were the ones where Games Workshop had had try to um encompass more of that kind of the hobby aspect and and contributions from the um uh their their customer base oh um, so do you think i was seeing i was seeing like joe game as soon as, as soon as you games. saw as soon as you saw that there was because those journals were set up as kind of like articles that were a little bit more out there um that probably wouldn't have you know would would have got edited out of a uh, a white mm. dwarf article or 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 actual box game but they obviously had wanted to you know they, they were saying oh well we've 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 had enough of this work being produced that it's a waste or it's a it's a useful vehicle for new like as they grew as a company you could see how they were wanting to have a vehicle for um mini get you know baby games designers and other uh, games workshop kind of writers to to contribute but also there was a significant amount of um kind of player contribution as well um and and that definitely i see i remember definitely you being inspired by that and a lot of your kind of um early um like games changes and not not full-on games like writing a full-on separate game but like a lot of those kind of changes that you wanted to do like an expansion of how to uh you know make new orc characters for 40k mm. for example were done because you were reading these journals and seeing the opportunity there to to potentially get your your name in print not that that ever happened but like as a 14 year old that was much more inspiring um, yeah yeah so that that's nice amazing bit. i had completely i have completely forgotten about the existence of the cities of journal um, yeah. I'm definitely going to go on eBay and see if I can figure out which ones I owned. Uh, should be fairly easy to figure out. I'm guessing it there wasn't that many of them. Yeah, they they they, they didn't do a, a massive print run, but um, but yes, yeah, that's well worth getting. Uh, yeah, getting and so what from. were some of the other early games that we played together? Like I certainly so, remember. Did we did we play any 40k together? I can't really. Remember. Yeah, so so between us, we were playing both Warhammer. I didn't own the box game of 40k. No, I got that for a Christmas. I you have a photo that. of me watching it. Yeah. Uh, so, so when I came around your house, we would be playing 40k with essentially your miniatures. Um, I had enough 
to kind of contribute, but I never had like a full army. So I had, you know, and this is where I had um, Space Hulk. So, oh, look, I've got a load of Terminators that we then cut up and converted into cool chaos lords and and all this kind of thing. Um, I also got a load of um, Harlequins as well at one point because that was <laughs> we we'd worked out that what was the cheapest like, right, yeah, like model points count model. army. <laughs> it was like a it was like a full on army for twenty models uh, that 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 was possible to do. That Absolutely. was quite fun. Um, but you also um, had um, a Warhammer Fantasy at least one Warhammer Fantasy battle army, mostly. Um, I seem to remember you had undead. Yeah, I, so, I still have some of my old undead figures, so I must have yeah. had. And I, I, I have video evidence from a home video of of me owning the Goofy Nagash model. That must have been my pride <laughs> of that nice. army. But I, I think I think that's where we we never really. Um, I, and then and then you you um, had a couple of other friends around, uh, and, and um, uh, we had uh, similar friends that. Uh, had a a dark elf army or a you know a chaos army and 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 an orc and goblin kind of force, but they were never they were never true kind of could take them to a tournament. They were never fully painted. They were you know it required um, heavy use of characters in order to bump up the points. You know all this kind of stuff. So it was good enough to, for for you know teenagers to have fun knocking about uh, playing, but but I don't think we were really. Um, successfully implementing that full kind of um, big Games Workshop army battles uh, in in the way that you know we were reading about in White Dwarf. We were always uh, um, trying to aspirationally go for that, but yeah. but the to be honest, the it was it was we were we were time rich because you know it was weekends and and things like this, but we were very, you know we were yeah. relatively uh, like money poor because we were kids and um having to also do the terrain you know also buying most of our money was then spent on buying the new starter sets we were fully in that you know i certainly was fully in that kind of uh, games workshop um conveyor belt of a customer uh buying all of their new stuff and so before uh <clears throat> the lizard man box came out for warhammer fantasy which i know i had and i think you probably mm -hmm. bought as well um, I seem to remember. I seem to remember you had Man of War, but I'm not certain. I feel like we played that. Um, we did play that. I didn't. I didn't have it. Is it your mate Chris who had? It Man was my mate Chris that had it. Yeah. So essentially, it was. It was if we we used to ne get excited and buy the the new the latest games. If if there was one game that we weren't particularly like really into. Mm -hmm. I, if we didn't get it, it was chances are someone else would have got it, and therefore we were playing it anyway. Right. Um, I think personally, I think where um, and I guess it, start... it also came out just as we were. It came out in ninety three, which is just as we were getting into these things anyway. So yeah, uh, yeah, we were we were like on ramping onto Warhammer and Warhammer. I think it had it had come out. Time. Yeah, it had come mm. out before we'd met, so it was already a game that was out. Mm. Um, and then I don't actually think it had a massive release window as well. So um, there was some there right was some and, big and releases in this in this out. way of like using our pocket money on whatever we thought was coolest. Like I definitely bought a box of the the monsters, the sea monsters. Yeah, obviously, just thought they were cool. Painted them up. Eventually, clipped the tentacles off and stuck them onto a Chaos Terminator at some point. But um, yeah, I don't think I actually had any. Any, I don't think I had a fleet or anything, but I definitely. I think I moments. think that was where um, it was. It was a small enough model count, and also weird, weird enough that we could we could represent the ships using some other models that we had lying about or make them. Mm. Um, and I think that's where the start of, of us trying to kind of homebrew um, some of those some of those games kind of came from because we could definitely make our own version of Mammal War enough to enough to successfully play a fun game on a on a tabletop yeah um, and I, I i sort of feel like a lot of the rules of man of war kind of echo quite deeply through me like i, I still feel a lot like i don't know like e even in gaslands like the way that the shooting template works is just nicked off of man of war even though at that point i probably hadn't played it for two decades 
Mm. Um, so there's something quite primal about those rules. Though I, I, we, yeah, we. I was thinking we must have played it, but I don't remember actually yeah. owning or reading I, the rule book. My my memory of, is um, the first real time we were successfully able to play full games as they were intended to play mm. was actually some of the skirmish games. We were a little bit older because by that time, you know, Necromunda had come out, Blood Bowl had come out. Mm. Um, and obviously Blood Bowl, <clears throat> it sorts itself out by already having a full pitch um, and all the counters and, and things. You don't need very much tem uh, terrain. In and, order also, to... and also, I because I still have it in my shed, Like mm -hmm. you must have got the box. And I thought, brilliant, I can make one of these. And I got a bit of um, chipboard and some flock paper from the model yep. shop and then like carefully drew the squares onto it. And I definitely just bought a... Um, I think I only had a Skaven team. I can't remember owning any other, but like, so that was it. Like, all I had to do was buy one team, and the rest of it was just like time investment and ingenuity in building a pitch. It's funny that exactly. board still has two holes at each end of the board, which weren't flocked, which is where I was going to build like elaborate three dimensional dugouts, um, which never got built. And obviously, it would have been completely impractical to store the damn thing if I had to put them in. But like, there's a little evidence of the sort of aspirational hobby Mike. Who is also easily distracted and so built the pitch that works fine that's even painted and got everything and little it's got little hero quest skulls i know i was gonna say something that it that particularly kept on getting knocked off and you it was constant most of the game was scurrying around on the on the ground I find the hero find quest skull and gluing it back on <laughs> yeah um but yeah and 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 then necromunda was was i think also the was well, probably the one where all of our interests aligned pretty perfectly because it, and I think it, once I, Necromunda came out, I, I can't even remember even playing 40 K that much after Necromunda came out. Cause Necromunda was just everything we kind of were. Exactly. It was, it was a small enough model count that you could successfully get a painted crew together. Like that was much more attainable. Um, it, it kind of piqued our interest. Cause at that time we were after a little bit more, um kind of crunch in mm. terms of like getting into the background of it getting excited about like team development uh getting kind of you know the concept the concept of of your um your army growing and improving was was to be honest a a kind of a fun new thing um and i see i i do remember because you got you got the box set first um I do remember we having a phone call and you describing the fact that you'd read about it in White Dwarf or, or like seen something. And and I remember you saying like, oh, I hope they've got uh, biker gangs, uh, <laughs> which didn't actually occur which until never you know, occurred maybe, in first edition of Necromunda. Maybe yeah. Gork and Morka and then, and then uh, later editions of ne Necromunda, they finally got, you finally got your wish uh, like only last year. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Come but yeah, on. I remember, you know, it was that whole um, uh, kind of concept of, oh, you'd also been reading some Judge Dredd and you'd also been, you know, some... some uh, yeah, no, um, I think I'd been reading, I'd been reading Route 666, one of the like Giant Games Workshop um, published yeah. post-apocalyptic. And, and, and to kind of, to widen it a little bit from Games Workshop, obviously that, that was our kind of main um, miniatures uh, um, kind of foray, but you definitely been um, uh, going more into the kind of the role playing games and um, kind of you know uh, vampire masquerade and some of yeah. these other, other kind of things that that um, we were having fun um, playing with, and so yeah, yeah, and so yeah, there yeah. was definitely yeah there was definitely. Um, kind of a, a a the inspiration was to ex to stretch yourself further than what games workshop were presenting as um gangers you know i remember you you went heavily into the van Sar at the beginning mm. um yes i still have very, my van Sar gang. yeah but very quickly you know that was where you were also wanting to you, you set up a um a a um a games club Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We we hired the community center, the hall yeah. down 
um, the road from the school. I remember it was like, like a Saturday yeah. morning. I remember I remember particularly buying like crates of chocolate bars and crisps and cans of drinks so that there was a tuck shop because that was yeah, very important nice. to me. I remember I remember sweating over painting and sanding and uh, like making some um, boards, like mm. some grey painted um, chipboards. Uh, so this is still in my on. dad's shed, actually. Which in like to, to someone that you know only was ever playing on literally on a tabletop or a, a ping pong mm. table um the concept that we would we would have multiple boards was was um was an interesting one that that you then um kind of took that time to kind of go well actually it's not just people it's not just organizing people coming together but also making it a little bit nicer for people to play and and yeah a bit more of an introduction to the to this right yeah a bit more of like a sort almost like a games master kind of a uh, a feeling to be like well i want other people to have fun with this I, I i can't remember if i can't remember if we played anything else at that games club or if it was just essentially like a necromunda club that ran for three months initially a necromunda i, th- I don't think we uh, i think we probably played a bit of warhammer and, and other things like people it depends on what people brought down but yeah um, but it was basically like it was other lads from our year at school so clearly and Necromunda had caught your, uh, enough people's uh, attention that it was like an acceptably, it was a socially acceptable pastime for a certain kind of nerd at our school. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was that was really good fun, I see. I, and I remember you like creating this um, wider Necromunda campaign where there was like a, 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 um, a slave uprising and some other kind of things like that, which we all, because, and that involved us all convert quickly trying to convert up a load of servitors uh, that would then uh, go rampant. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was I've really funny. Got, I've still got two of those models. That explains it. Yeah. Because, because the other thing at that time was, um, or everyone's gangs had a suspicious number of last cannons that they managed <laughs> to buy. Like very quickly, there was there was some very high powered weaponry going around. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you put the uh, you put trust in the hands of fifteen year olds, and that's what you get. Yeah, it was good fun. Um, so uh, we definitely played a bunch of Necromunda. I think we we played a lot of that and then around this and then you definitely had Gorka Morka. I still have some bits and bobs that seem to suggest that I at least engaged in it but I think you bought that one didn't you yeah so I, I bought Gorka Morka and I also bought Mordenheim as well ah so they were the two uh, kind of other skirmish games and I think because I think both... by Mordenheim which is like 99 I think I was like yeah. I was very much like into role playing and music and sort of out i was out of miniatures by then yeah um i was still uh had a couple of mates uh that were were into that but we were we were suddenly finding that we just didn't know have time to build whole armies we had other uh, activities we wanted to be uh, engaging in, including drinking lots etc so obviously yep. put a massive um dampen on my wallet um but uh, yeah, I was still kind of into that that kind of that genre um, that that ticked my boxes. Mm. Um, yeah, no, yes, sort of... uh, and then and then you were you were also we we also played quite a bit of role play games at that at that stage as well. So it was it was it was much more going into uh, Call of Cthulhu, yeah, I remember Vampire Masquerade, and those kind of different flavors, and just trying exploring what else is out there. Because yeah, there's, we were there's able, some other there's some we other weird to... games in my collection that <clears throat> I can't remember whether we played together. So there was well, there was BattleTech that I brought back from the states, which I can't remember if we actually played or whether I just sort of hoarded it and held it. Um, you occasionally brought out the models to to represent like a few little bits, but we never really played anything particular. I think that was because like that set up a little bit more of a camp as a campaign and we never really got that off the ground. I mean, my, my, like my expectation is I, I attempted to read the rules of Battletech and failed to, I failed to ingest them. Um, Possibly. And uh, we also, I also had a little space fighting game called Silent Death with little hex map. And mm-hmm. I remember at least playing that a couple of times because the rules of it are familiar to me. Um, but I can't remember whether we played that. 
Um, I think we played it once or twice. I remember. I remember you getting the models out. Um, maybe that answers not, the question. I can't remember what... the rules of the of it though. No, maybe that answers the question of what the hell were we playing my Space Fleet game with in terms of miniatures. So, so Battlefleet Gothic did come out at that time as well, and I was. Did you have uh, Battlefleet I'd, Gothic? I'd, yeah, I'd merrily collected that as well. Um, but and and at that time, you'd got a copy of Space Fleet from somewhere. Oh, did I actually have the box of it? <clears throat> I, yeah, you did. Be um, and it came with two, like it had like two or three sh um, ships per side. Yeah, little plastic. Like Eldar and, <clears throat> and and other ones. And and from there, like you didn't get Battlefleet Gothic itself, but you were you were at that stage where you were wanting to use this. You know, you were inspired and wanting to use the things that that uh, you'd already got. Um, and just trying to kind of flex. I think I think just trying to kind of flex some kind of creativity, really. That's interesting. Yeah, I I suspected that I'd owned the box set because when I when I bought a second hand copy of it a few years on eBay uh, during the Billion Suns development, like it all seemed extremely familiar to me. But I wasn't yeah. sure if that was just from reading White Dwarf articles about it. But yeah, now you mention it, like I definitely had the the little um, rudimentary plastic um, spaceships from there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, basically, we didn't we didn't have the core box of Man of War. We did have some spaceships. It was pretty, you know, it was pretty exciting to to, uh, and but we knew about the core rules of Man of War, mm. and they were simple enough that you could emulate them, and certainly you could port it onto a spaceships game and feel that you you had something fun here and obviously the, we then went completely overboard because um you know you look at those spaceships that we designed uh and where man of war that there might be a um like a, a, the side of the ship kind of template is this big uh the the spaceships we designed were absolutely gigantic yeah, like I, every I single to... every single location, it was like a, a city size, uh, like ship. So I've got I've got them on the shelf. Impossible I've to got destroy. them on the shelf here. So, um, the the gentle listener will have to imagine. Um, oh yeah, here's a good example. So this is a Tyranid ship. This is a Tyranid ship, and I remember making these in. Um, uh, Microsoft right. Publisher, I think. And so this is like a ship card that sort of looks a lot like a big Man of War ship card, but this one's got like, you know, Venom Cannon and the brain has a two up save. But if you lose that, um, if you destroy both the heart and the brain, remove the ship. So yeah, so we made like dozens of these sort of things. And I don't have the, like, I don't have the rules that we played anymore. I just have the ship cards. Mm. Um, but I guess we must have just played some kind of like, Battleship Gothic Man of War kind of half imagined, half remembered hybrid, which made sense to us because we were playing it. Yeah, and I've yeah. got some um like this is an orc hulk that uh Tom Williams made. Yeah. Look uh, at that. Friend, I mean, friend Tom. That's just... <sighs> now the other thing about these is that I seem to remember, perhaps you'll perhaps you'll know for certain, um this copy of White Dwarf, which is from slightly earlier, this is from May. 1993 and I, I feel like I had this one as well because it's got some mm -hmm. Skaven and some Chaos Dwarfs in so maybe this is my first anyway this has got a and this is a, a copy that I've since purchased off off the internet this has got a game called Warmaster which was yep. a cards and counters game with a oh look at this doesn't that look familiar <laughs> yeah and so exactly in this you move the units around the ships to sort of play out a little war game i'm pretty sure that our version of space fleet allowed you to do that on literally every ship on the table but i can't yeah remember. we 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 went oh well, isn't it cool to have crew oh obviously they should be moving about essentially that whole game you'd have to play on every single template on every single ship that you had uh, it just became absolutely monstrous. But that's um, funny. So that's a bit like it's a bit like a billion suns plays across a couple of tables. Well, this has got like the the strategic table, and then every ship can be a sub combat zone. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, should cool. I should definitely re-release this. This is the kind of this is the kind of madness the world doesn't need but uh, can exist. So it's I, fun. and I, I think again, 
that's be- they released that kind of stuff because um, Games Workshop has, had released actual board games, mm. which didn't really have miniatures. It had it had tokens and, and card stock, um, and the one that accompanies that was, um, I believe, um, there, well, there's actually a game that was about the um, the attack on uh, terror. Uh, the hor- I think it was actually called Horus yes, Heresy. Yes, it was called Horus Heresy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah this and one... it was it was a it was a um, it was accompanying the previous game, which was um, Battle for Armageddon, which was Here a similar. Here, here's a here's a John Brindley original. Oh, look uh, at so that. This is oh, an elder beauty. elder wraith ship. Yeah, so I mean that is gigantic in comparison to there was just an unnecessary number of right. Yeah, like a, a man of war ship is normally a big one is a nine. It's, yeah, exactly. Nine squares. But who? But but where's the fun in that? I want I want to uh, be able to move my guys around the solar sails, and then why why should a solar sail only have one location? It should have five. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and look, this this dates it as well. This is a table of stats that you've created, which includes Elder Pi- uh, Eldar pirates, which were obviously Sweet. they were a big they were a big thing when we were growing up. Yeah. Dinosaur riding pirates, yeah. Sweet. Um, so yeah, I have fond memories of at least making Space Fleet. I can't super remember playing it, but I guess we must have done because uh, I mean, in all honesty most of the time was was making and then refining those kind of things and then arguing about particular rules that you might have created and then having another go at refining and then and then r- rinse repeat and having fun doing that rather than actually playing the blooming thing um, <laughs> that makes sense yeah I mean, that's exactly. still my primary pleasure today exactly so the other thing i wanted to ask you about is this thing here which is called speed demon which was a game that i wrote I know I wrote because here it is, which was basically like a a race game um, for orc bikers and stuff, maybe space mm-hmm. bikers. It says place the bikes on starting grid, make the first initiative roll, choose gear, may choose to go up or down a de- de- gear, declare which, and then depending on how fast you're going, you like you move the distance in centimeters given on your bikes cards. I don't seem to have any bike cards here, and there's crashes and going out of control and stuff. And so what's super interesting is that like completely separately you and i had a conversation eight years ago where you were like there should be a car racing game but like x-wing um and then essentially this speed demon like faxed itself back out of my brain and i was like yeah i could definitely do that yeah. so this is weird this is like the prototype of gaslands written in i don't know 96 97 something like that i i believe that is um that is your ramblings put to put to words uh, like written down uh, because you'd got some um epic um orcs uh, so some kind of epic sized orcs they they'd released mm. epic 40k but you weren't for whatever reason you didn't want to buy the actual game at that time you were interested Andy Chambers what does he know about writing games exactly like i think you'd you'd reach your kind of knee jerk, uh, like, I don't want to, you know, buy these games anymore kind of situation. Yeah. Um, but you were very interested in, in the actual miniatures itself. Like you'd bought, um, I'd loads and, of the and, and, and at sure. that time we were, we were, you know, you, we were writing these kind of things. So mm. being able to buy a pack of, um, quite a few bikes, buggies, like, uh, the battle wagons had just come out that were like the new s- design of them. Obviously, they were in Epic at this time, so they wouldn't come out in 40k for a while. But they were already an, a much more exciting looking uh, kind of concept than than the previous uh, old style orcs. Um, and you, you know, and by that time you'd um, you'd collected somehow um, a a selection of like small like Epic um forces and, and things like that so so you were looking around you know you you had you had enough um kind of miniatures and counters that and miniatures that could be used as counters that that um we could start actively designing these kind of games and successfully mm. having a, a fun you know a complete game that 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 okay it was the rule book is your is written in your uh 
angle bind, uh, you know, your your lever binder there rather than a, a published rule book. But nevertheless, we had a really good time playing them. Um, so certainly, certainly that Speed Freaks one, I remember. Um, I, I'm sure it was an amalgamation or, or like part of you trying to build a cool orcs running about smashing each other kind of kind of experience but using the using the um epic 40k models and may maybe maybe that was me like at the same time as gorka morka came out i was like well mm. pa, i'll do that i don't i don't really remember what, like the timing of it but i haven't written the date on it so who knows yeah um and here is here is the first page of the warfare game that uh i wrote which obviously we've been playing GURPS. I don't know if you remember, I had a few GURPS rule books, um, the generic universal role playing system. Yeah. Because uh, this one says, Welcome to Warfare, the generic and universal wargaming system. Uh, and it has like a tech levels concept. So it can it can be used for fantasy or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or science fiction. Um so so uh, at one point you also uh, and and obviously everyone goes through the same kind of cycle where you we're going off to going off to college and 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 the university that kind of stuff like everything gets kind of put aside uh, yeah. whilst we're kind of doing that and then um and then slowly we we return to that um after after university i i certainly had a basically a break from from wargaming itself i i still kind of like kept my nose in in terms of like the background and mm. what was coming out, but I, I didn't actually purchase a model, for example. I'd also, yeah, um, I, I was, yeah. I think I was pretty much like I made a clean break from probably 2000 or 99 all the way through. You so. made such a clean break that you'd given me, you donated a, a load of models to me. I know, but I foolishly gave the majority of them to the Mottrams because they had like a graveyard in their loft where they'd, they'd managed to. Sp to like convince a bunch of people to just give them their so they just had like plastic bags full of like old space marines and plastic yeah. that's where my plastic um uh land raider ended up is in their uh in their like drat in their smaug's hoard of uh 90s uh games workshop miniatures but yeah i gave you some pieces which i had no idea how i decided you you gave me you gave me some um warhammer uh you'd collected a small warhammer chaos force um and you'd given me a load of uh chaos plastic chaos warriors uh which were highly highly converted oh uh, yes to, every every to model we were kids. Manner. yeah yeah so so that was quite fun even um, most of my hero fun. quest models now that i get them out of the box they've all had weapon swaps for literally yeah. no reason <laughs> exactly weapon swaps uh, the the best one was like the weapon swap where it was it was a gigantic axe that you'd swapped out for a very small <laughs> spike so the guy was just holding this like literally a fire poker <laughs> Pointed stick. It was so good. He was this so armored. What for, it needs to be is the 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 balance between his armor and the <laughs> and the weapon he was holding was so poorly poorly balanced. But um, yes, yeah, so that was good fun. But also, you um, you'd also donated to me, um, essentially a a, a small um force of uh, imperial guard. You had you had a couple of squads of metal imperial guard and a and a land uh, Lehman Russ um and i'd yeah. when i got back in i i was actually dabbling with with maybe getting back into 40k mm. because i was more into trying to do conversions and, and trying to do get back into painting mm. um and i kind of thought oh well i'm this will be an interesting kind of you know starter uh, i'll start using those i ended up just prevaricating not doing anything with those and then and then moving on to some slightly different things. And so I then thought, well, I could either just keep these and slowly not paint them and they slowly kind of, slowly you know, rot, rot and, and and get one model gets lost somewhere and other things like that. So I ended up just going, right, okay, all these go back to Mike, boom. Um, here's a nice kind of care package of old models that you might remember. Um, so yes, yeah, so I definitely fun. remember those Chaos Warriors and those Chaos Knights. Yeah, yeah, they got they got a solid playing in eighth edition Warhammer for many years, actually. Um, Very good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah so um, that sort of that sort of gap, I think, was uh, 
you know that was also um also a gap in like pretty much any tabletop gaming for me i didn't really even play any board games until i got back into it but i have a i have a white dwarf from 2013 which i think is the the first one that i I, I that i bought like getting back into it so i know i know roughly the the duration of that um of that gap yeah was there yeah. anything else is there anything else that you remember that we played together like i i feel like advanced space crusade you mentioned it before like i definitely had the models for that because one of them showed up in a in an old box of toys at um at my mum's house recently i can't remember if we um, played that together but we we played quite a bit of space crusade yeah um uh advanced space crusade yeah and you had did you have the one with the sort of green tiles mm. so um our mate uh tom williams had um he had tyranid attack uh, he had tyranid attack and i had uh, we we basically played a, um quite a bit of those kind of um uh like the second tier um games that, that mm. were not the full army game so so we played a lot of space hulk um for example did, did you and i play space hulk yeah so we we played a, a fair bit of we we played a fair bit of space hulk we also played a fair bit of because because it had a load of gene stealers as well so that was yeah, like an immediate yeah. kind of thing where we could could um use those but also we played a lot of um warhammer quest as well um, oh that's true we haven't mentioned warhammer quest which is burnt quite brightly in my mind yeah but you had the you had the Warhammer Quest set. I remember. I that. had the set. Yeah, um, it was it was the fact that we could uh, again. It was that kind of that that period where a lot of the games allowed you to level your characters or your your kind of crew, and they really leaned heavily into that. Um, and that was really that was really nice to kind of have that ability to continue playing with your same kind of character kind of week yeah. week on week which was which was great and and something that i've only recently managed to kind of get back into having now kind of started up again um and joining kind of a you know war games club a local war games club and and local blood bowl league you mm. know that kind of thing so I'm, I'm kind of getting my kicks out of out of that now um but yeah the, the we definitely flip-flopped between all of the you know maybe a tight rotation of six games at any one time uh mm. in our in our early teens um well and, to and talking of that like uh campaign system thing you also had a copy of mighty empires I mighty think. empires yeah because i think we just played that as a board game but i have incredibly fond memories of like rolling on the you know the weather charts and figuring out where the assassins were and stuff like there's so much good in that game that it I was remember, it was such a good it was such a good uh like board game and it was so fun to kind of lay out the tiles to to try and emulate the old world or emulate mm. like britain you know that right. kind of thing um that was good fun and then i remember we tried to uh, there's there's rules in it for saying well obviously you can use this as a massive campaign for your warhammer games and so it was like okay well that's the obvious thing to do we tried that within like three weeks it collapsed because everyone's too keen like now we'd probably be able to e nicely do that because we'd be armchair like sitting mm. and beard stroking about our next move and then like oh that was excellent use of an assassin there you know that yeah. kind of stuff whereas at the time it was like oh, I've, like i just want to play the 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 warhammer game i want i want to play five battles all in one go I, I can't wait for someone else to do their thing <laughs> um so I, I i think the campaign kind of fizzled a little bit um at all times but but you also um i remember um you also created a 40k version did i as well yeah it was um you created that kind of hexes um and it was it was so that it could actually you know you you drawn it so it could go on a wall um we played really? that for a bit as well oh wow i know i have no i have no evidence of that so that had not that had not uh, you might yeah uh, maybe maybe that's gone you definitely got to the point where you you'd created a map that was would that have been a, around the time of necromunda then or no that was, was i think that? that was probably just before that actually because um that was really the only the reason why i kept playing that was the reason we were playing 40k mm. was was in an attempt to you know continue this kind of campaign that we were we were busy um 
contributing oh, cool. into, which was Very quite cool. nice. Uh, wow, yeah, so that, that that has been an extremely interesting journey because uh, that's <laughs> the last of many things that I've learned from this conversation. So thanks, John. I will say that, yeah, I, my personal uh, achievement was like only a few years ago, maybe 10 years ago, mm. um, um, after university, finally getting a fully painted Warhammer for, uh, Fantasy Battle Army that I then could take to a tournament that was tournament standards. That was you know. your your beautiful high elf army, right? Yeah, that was my high elf. And that, I love I, I love that it's high elves because high, like, high elves was yeah. always your thing mm. at all times in, in all games. Like <laughs> I always try and uh, try and go for the high elf. Always the um, space elves or the high elves or yeah. I I was thirty nine years old when I completed a uh, tomb kings army. Um, so that's just just two years ago. Uh, and that was also, yeah, the first time in my uh, in my life that I had actually finished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's only it. like fifteen hundred points, but you know, that's a hell of a milestone. Yeah, it's good. No, I think that was it. Like we were we were so busy swapping between systems, and we were so busy getting distracted by new miniatures that we never really stuck at one thing. I think we were both quite similar in that that we just were happy to bounce around between novelties rather than. You know, saying okay, I'm I'm only going to collect undead, and I'm going to collect it for five years. And yeah, I mean, obviously, we had, um, you know, we we had uh, kind of um, issues like, oh, we we didn't have enough enough money to spend on every single model mm. under the sun, or like there was only a certain amount of time we could dedicate to these things because we had other other stuff to do. Um, uh, so within that kind of like frame, we were really just participating and enjoying gaming because mm. of the the kind of the social engagement of it and the kind of the 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 challenges it, it was um asking of us rather than um a more kind of completionist um kind of more solo effort in all honesty of of trying to create i i really feel that you know really refining your painting and, and creating a full army that's a complete completed army itself is quite a um it's a solo activity more yeah. than anything else uh, it's something you are, right. you Whereas are doing I, I feel like bring. even today we're still doing that same thing where we're challenging each other to small hobby projects and that for me, gives me a lot of motivation. Like I can easily finish a small sort of warband or force or a piece of terrain or something if I know there's a game coming up. Um, but you know, this you know we're trying to finish hobgoblin armies at the moment. It's it's going to be a slog, and we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to kick each other's ass to get it done. Because um, I think you're right. Like we've we've always been in a situation where it's more fun to do things as part of like a social kind of loop rather than just kicking yeah. your own ass to do something yeah that's good awesome stuff all right well um uh i think we'll wrap up there for this conversation um thanks very much for watching and or listening and um if you are interested in seeing more from what's going on here at planet smasher games hq then hit that subscribe button and i will uh, be delighted to hear from you guys if uh, any of the games that uh, we discussed are on your list of favorites or if you want to see any of the holy artifacts from that uh, archive of mike's old scratchings um but yeah until next time i will uh, catch you later bye bye <laughs>
we were using that you put you put that over the drawing what? so that you, you could then put, put put like pins in it or like count that was how we were like counting how far to the armies oh. were moving and stuff it it didn't work very well but it was uh, i think it was the attempt was was uh, laudable excellent yeah heavy yeah, heavy fun. metal componentry to build a pre planetary empires uh, campaign Crazy. i i just remember that that particular mesh that was like you know the um half a centimeter square mesh it was just like every time you cut it you cut your hand or stuck it in your hand <laughs> like it it just had like constant like the ends of them were like this and they were just vicious laser sharp yeah that was it that was a hobby a hobby challenge to uh to come away without blood yeah